Thailand Outlook. สวัสดีครับ Welcome to Thailand Outlook, the news digest program broadcasting from Radio Thailand FM 88 and also online at nbt.prd.go.th. I'm k a c h a n g w i t c h i t Today we'll look into the heart of Thailand's economic progress, starting with the Prime Minister spearheading the development in the Eastern Economic Corridor, a key driver of the country's modern economy. We will also talk about Thailand's active participation in the ASEAN-Japan Tourism Minister's Special Dialogue, a very significant step in enhancing regional tourism collaboration. And finally, we will explore Thailand's launch of a soft power strategy, a new initiative aimed at leveraging cultural and diplomatic strength to boost the national economy. And in our first story today, in uh, Thailand's Eastern Economic Corridor or EEC. Prime Minister Setha t h a i s i n is now taking significant steps to attract foreign investments. And during a recent trip, uh, using a train from Hua Lam Phuong Station to Lam s h a b a n g Port in c h o n b u r i Province, he discussed strategic plans with key agencies. The government now, under Setha's direction, is focusing on upgrading vital infrastructure and public utilities like water supply to international standards. They are also considering tax incentives to make the area more appealing to investors around the world. And this active preparation of the EEC is aimed at spurring economic growth, creating employment opportunities, and establishing Thailand as an important global economic hub. In um, our next story, the Ministry of Tourism and Sports and the Tourism Authority of Thailand or TAT recently represented the country. At the ASEAN-Japan Tourism Minister's Special Dialogue, and uh, during the gathering, Thailand highlighted its commitment to sustainable tourism initiatives, such as raising tourism standards, promoting emerging destinations, focusing on medical and wellness tourism, and embracing digital transformation to boost competitiveness in the tourism sector. Now, key discussions took place with Japan's Minister of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism, uh, Tatsuo Saito. On sustainable tourism and community-based tourism, as well as promoting new tourist destinations, plans were also made to establish a special working committee between Thailand's Ministry of Tourism and Sports and Japan's Transport and Tourism Research Institute (ASEAN) in the regional office. Thailand also shared its regional tourism strategies with the ASEAN Secretary General, Dr. Kao Kim Horn, emphasizing regional tourism standards, tourism for Uh, everyone, uh, stakeholders' participation and human resources development, and furthermore, opportunities for Thailand's participation in tourism activities, um, organized by the OECD, were also tabled. The meeting, co-chaired by Japan and Laos, marked the 50 years of ASEAN-Japan friendship and cooperation. And this focus on planning for the next 50 years of sustainable tourism development, and in their joint media statement. ASEAN and Japan's tourism ministers committed to promoting sustainable tourism and enhancing mutual exchanges in the future. And in our final headline today, our lovely country Thailand is set to boost its economy through a newly launched soft power strategy, aiming to generate about four trillion baht in revenue over the next four years. Now, central to this plan is the establishment of the Thailand Creative Content Agency, or TACA. Focusing on elevating Thai creative industries globally, the government's strategy involves an extensive training program for 20 million people across 11 creative sectors, including food, sports, festivals, tourism, music, books, movies, um, games, arts, as well as design and fashion. And this ambitious initiative will unfold in three phases. Now, the first 100-day phase focuses on logistical setups like registration venues and uh, regulatory changes. Complemented by cultural events such as the Winter Festival, the next phase, running through April, we'll see the launch of the One Family One Soft Power, or OFOS project, and lay the foundation for TACA. And this period will also feature the Water Festival and a Soft Power Forum. And uh, the final phase, lasting until October 3rd of 2024, aims to train 1 million individuals and includes major cultural events. Like film and music festivals, enhancing Thailand's cultural footprints globally. 
And the strategy is structured into uh, three segments. Uh, headwaters for training initiatives, midstream for developing creative industries, and downstream for promoting Thai culture worldwide. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will handle global promotion, while the Ministry of Culture will work to uh, derive economic value from these cultural activities. And that wraps up today's episode of Thailand Outlook. We have covered some significant developments from the Prime Minister's initiatives in advancing the Eastern Economic Corridor to Thailand's active participation in the ASEAN-Japan Tourism Minister's Special Dialogue. We also look into the government's launch of the Soft Power Strategy, a bold move aimed at elevating the Thai economy. And thank you for joining us, and I will see you again on the next episode of Thailand Outlook. I'm Gua Chang Wit, talk to you. Bye for now. Thailand Outlook. A fundamental asset of Thailand's rich tourism landscape is its local identities. Dynamic, attractive, and amazingly varied, every local community in Thailand offers a different and enriching experience for travelers, both within the nation and from anywhere in the world. From the fabric weavers of the north to the fishing villages of the south, travelers to Thailand will find an array of local identities. As more women enter the workforce, there is an increase in demand for childcare, senior care, and the improvement of care policies and services. These factors motivate current concepts of care work and the economy. However, the ASEAN context uses a broader scope of care in the spirit of leaving no one behind in sustaining our region's steady economic growth and returning to pre-pandemic robust economic growth. Many current and emerging initiatives of the care economy are cross-cutting across pillars involving various sectoral bodies and working groups in connection with sustainable development, the digital economy, and even cybersecurity. Therefore, ASEAN will utilize existing mechanisms to examine such cross-cutting issues and the challenges of the care economy. Any regional framework must recognize existing sectoral initiatives that contribute to the platform of the care economy, outlining connections between these initiatives and pointing out any gaps. As the ASEAN Chair of 2023, Indonesia can set an example and show a strong political commitment to fostering a care economy, both nationally and regionally. The Indonesian government is investing in care infrastructure and programs like the National Program for Community Empowerment, or PNPM, which aims to improve access to childcare, health services, and education for low-income families. Indonesia's National Social Security System, or BPJS, has also expanded its coverage to include health services for older people, which aims to improve access to healthcare for the elderly population. These types of interventions have an impact on both caregivers and recipients, and can be transformative in achieving gender justice. One of the most pervasive forms of inequality is gender inequality, which occurs in both the political and economic spheres. Women experience discrimination, gender-based violence, and a disproportionate amount of unpaid and low-paying care work, in addition to unequal access to opportunities and income. Care work is therefore essential for both our societies and the economy. It includes tasks that we see being performed in our homes every day, such as child care, elder care, care for people with disabilities, and household chores. Despite COVID-19 and the related containment efforts leading to increases in both men's and women's unpaid care workloads, the majority of this work is still carried out by women. Care is a vital social good and can spur development. According to the ILO, increased spending on care services could lead to the creation of more than 10 million new jobs in Indonesia. After the post-COVID recovery, it is crucial to make investments in the care economy because they will help to address some of the most pressing social and economic issues facing the country, like poverty and inequality, 